Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. I know it's been a while. I wanted to come back and do a specific uh, presentation on the monsoon. We're going to get hit pretty good in the mountains on Tuesday and Wednesday, and obviously beyond that. Moving into July and August, special case study. Uh, if you are new to Colorado, we get hit with new moisture in July and August, fueling all sorts of new problems in the state. So let me just jump into this and explain what the monsoon is here in the state. So you see this uh, high pressure. The green on this represents just moisture in general across the west. So the positioning of the high becomes very important. And what happens is it starts to draw new moisture in from the south, from the west and down from the gulf. And what ends up happening in Colorado is the atmosphere gets flushed with new moisture. And so what we're dealing with, a higher humidity, you may feel that in the air, that comes in the form of higher dew points, higher relative humidity values, um, and more thunderstorms. That fuels more thunderstorms. It become more likely in July and August. We're already starting to see that happen now. And they can happen at any time. It can be morning, noon, night. That's one of the problems that we see, especially with climbing, 14ers, 13ers, high peaks, whitewater rafting, mountain biking under the higher terrain, all the outdoor activities we love here become affected by this. Flash flooding becomes a problem. We saw this with the uh, mudslide in Glenwood Canyon, the two different mudslides. Um, we're just at the tip of the iceberg of what could be happening up there for the rest of July and August with uh, more flash flooding in that canyon and more lightning. Lightning is still the number one weather killer here in Colorado. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Lightning flashes per day. So on the curve, you see that it starts to go up as we roll through June and it peaks in July and August. And then the curve begins to come back down after that point. But the peak in the curve represents the most lightning flashes in Colorado over a two month period happening in July and August. And that does correspond with monsoon season. Again, you're bringing in more moisture into Colorado, fueling more afternoon storms. In a sense, all of these thunderstorms become juiced up and they become more lightning prone in those months. And we see more casualties and more deaths, injuries and deaths, I should say, in the months of July and August. Uh, and you can see in the curve here, um, all of the numbers peak in the afternoon hours from noon to about 4 p.m corresponds with most people like to be outdoors. I mean, it's not really a surprise that that happens, but that also represents the double-edged sword. That's when most of the thunderstorms with lightning tend to move uh, off the higher terrain and across the front range. So you can almost back this up just a little bit um, and say the peak hours for lightning over the mountains really is from 11 noon to one to maybe two, three o'clock in the afternoon. That's why the old adage of being off the summit by noon is, is so powerful. It works most of the time. It doesn't work all of the time, but it works most of the time to avoid that peak lightning window in Colorado. So to get really specific and just to give you a, a, an, an idea, oh, there, there are some of the suggestions. You climb early, watch the sky, obviously, and understand the forecast and take rain gear to wait out storms. Those are obvious things that if you've climbed before, you know what you have to do. And so the forecast becomes paramount. Each day you'll want to look at this um, because what happens is, is what we'll try to do is time out the monsoon surges or plumes. And that's going to change from day to day um, as to when the plume will swing through and then the dry air will take over before the next plume comes in. Just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at here. So today we have afternoon storms. This is our future radar. You can see all the storms across Colorado. What will typically happen is what will happen tonight. The storms will then fade as the daytime heating um, dies, essentially. And then that's, that, that's the fuel for the storms. That dies out. So then tomorrow we start off dry in a lot of places. But tomorrow is going to be a high-risk day across the mountains. It's going to be a disaster zone down in the San Juans by the afternoon hours with all of the storms heading all the way up into Pitkin County and across a lot of those areas, right across Glenwood Canyon, potentially. Um, one of the areas that might be actually um, a bright spot, a little bit drier, would be the sand grays. But even there, I do expect afternoon storms. But you can see where the bulk of this arc of, I mean, th this is going to be heavy rain, snow over the 14ers, and lightning mixed in with all of that activity. Tomorrow's going to be a tough day, fueled by a trough or a dip in the atmosphere, plus some monsoon contribution. 
tomorrow. And it, what will happen is there will be somewhat of a break Tuesday night, but some of the moisture I have a feeling is going to live on through the night into Wednesday morning and then an early start to the thunderstorms. You see this a lot in July and August. You'll get an early initiation of the thunderstorms in the afternoon hours as this uh, future cast rolls. The storms will keep begin to develop and they will continue through the midday into the afternoon hours and you'll have those thunderstorms. We saw this happen on Bierstead um, a few years ago. The storms popped up by like 9 or 10 in the morning in monsoon season. We had lightning cash, we had lightning injuries like at 10 o'clock in the morning before anybody expected them. But you can see the action on Wednesday afternoon. There's a lot of green on the board. Um, and then that would probably uh, die out that night. And then Thursday would probably start dry over the mountains. But you get the idea of what we're dealing with here uh, in monsoon season. There will be, you know, one to two day stretches with with a lot of activity like we're going to see on Tuesday and Wednesday. And you can see that moisture moves away on Thursday morning. But Thursday afternoon is going to be tough for the front range high peaks, all the way from Longs down to Grays and Tories and probably Pikes and then across northeast Colorado. That's where a lot of the moisture is going to end up on Thursday afternoon. So you really have to track a lot of this action from day to day. Um, so let me show you something else. Um, and and I, like I, I give presentations all the time on this stuff, and I've gone really in depth um, in the last couple of years because there's such a demand on the 14ers now. Um, and let me, let me take you into one slide from my presentation. You know, one of the things I talk a lot about now is the use of apps and websites and data and where to find good data. And um, you really have to be careful with this stuff. Um, a few words of uh, caution on this. Um, the forecast that you see illustrated on a lot of websites is really the tip of the iceberg. It represents one idea, one, for, one idea, one forecast of literally hundreds, if not thousands of different forecast iterations. Um, so you really have to understand that going into it. Understand the different perspectives. That's how you kind of get around it. You have to look for the differences among forecasts that you see out there. You'll see all kinds. If you can do that, if you can, if you can produce and generate experience over the years and then use that to connect the dots, Richard Feynman talks about that, you have experience, use it to your advantage because if you're new to the game, you don't have experience, you can't connect the dots. So use that to your advantage. Understand the trends. That's one of the things I think is most powerful going into this. Understand the trends that you see out there. Compare what you saw two days ago with one day ago with now and understand what the trend is over those last three days. Look for context into this. Is it a monsoon surge? Is it a high pressure dome, which we had a couple of weeks ago? That's clearly not the case now. Is it a low pressure plus the monsoon, which we're going to see tomorrow and Wednesday? Look for cold fronts. Look for wind shifts. You know, make a checklist and put all of these boxes in. And so you really see the full picture. And that's how you're going to build your confidence meter when you're trying to uh, make big outings, set FKTs, which I'm dealing with. Uh, I'm helping a team right now try to do that in Colorado. So, you know, you have to build a confidence meter and be honest about what you're seeing and don't have summit fever. Um, be willing to turn around. That's one of the great things about living in Colorado is anybody can turn around. Everything's a day trip in Colorado at the end of the day if you're fast enough. Be willing to turn around. You can come back the next day and do it again. Try it again the next day. So there you go. We'll do some additional recordings here as we move through summer and monsoon season. Thank you for tuning in here.